93.9. K-I-S-W. Well, that's why successful, I heard you talk about successful black guys go for white women, and successful white guys don't as much go for black women. That's only a thing of, like, uh, what is forbidden. Like, because for so many years, like, you know, you go back to Jimmy the Greek, like, white guys just went in and took what they wanted, whereas black guys were never able to. So now that's a sign of success is when you grab a white girl. It's like you're taking something from people that have kind of, you know... Not treated you too well. Yeah, definitely. More theater tonight for more fun discussion. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the hell am I doing? Get <laughs> with me. You know what happens every time you come on this show? Because a lot of people, you know, don't know this about you, Jim. I mean, if you pay attention to your act, because you're just prolific. It's amazing how you put, you just come out with new material, new material that's compelling and good. Oh, thank you. But people don't realize that you are you are really a student and a very intelligent guy. You're also a deviant, and you just focus more on the deviancy when you're doing your act. But you you could be the host of any damn talk show on an AM station anytime because you just have the brains and the articulation to make that happen. Well, you know what it is? Like you, I mean, we, we're in the same business with this. You see the nonsense you have to deal with in radio. And like you mentioned, I missed before. And, and the, the double standard with language is so frustrating to have to. It's so funny. to have to hear Geraldine Ferraro apologize because she, she's a very liberal person. She's not a racist, but she had to say she was sorry for saying that Obama's getting a little bit more attention because he's black. Which is true. Which, I mean, it's true. Completely true. I mean, she's right. He, yep. it, it sucks for her to have to say that, and it is reprehensible, you know, that uh, we, we, as a society, that we would have to base it. But it doesn't stop it from being true. Yep. You know, yeah, you, you wish it wasn't true, but why else would we care about the guy? I mean, if he was anybody else, it wouldn't be the same. Absolutely not. And, and Geraldine Ferraro should never have to say she's sorry for it. The only thing she should apologize for is having hair like David Bowie. That's probably the only <laughs> apology. She's a horrible looking woman. Oh. Almighty, put a hat on, you oh. old lesbian. <laughs> oh, man. And Jim is going to be at the Moore Theater tonight. <laughs> it's one show, 8 o'clock. You've got to see this show. I mean, there's nothing like seeing Jim live. And frankly, you haven't seen comedy like Jim's comedy. If, if you never have and you love the edge, you love the mores of society questioned and destroyed, and, and you also want to have a guy admit the darkest secrets that any human being would admit about himself, <laughs> I mean, the title of your last HBO special, right there itself, proves that you'll go anywhere where no one would ever want to go before. Yeah, it's like you got to tell on yourself, man. It's almost it's like it's corny, but it's like if I'm going to trash other people, I should start here first. You know, that's why I never feel bad about what I say about other people. It's like I'm honest about my own awfulness. I mean, if there's a name for it, I didn't invent it. You know, what am mm -hmm. I, the first guy to get hookers? No one cares. You know, it's like we've been, look at Spitzer. I mean, it's how great is it that, that, that this woman, this 22-year-old girl from Jersey changed the face of American politics. Oh, yeah. Did you hear there's another ring? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How there's... about there's another prostitution ring they busted and Spitzer was a client there, too? I love it. And <laughs> they said he had his socks on when, he, when he'd have sex, and which just shows you that he couldn't wait. That stupid <laughs> cadaver Silda he was married to. <laughs> Elliot, do it faster, Elliot. Okay, Silda. How awful that sex must have been with a stupid Charles Nelson Riley ascot. Oh, you look like Bobby Wheeler from Taxi, bitch. I don't blame him. <laughs> oh, good boy, Elliot. <laughs> wow. It's not a guy alive that doesn't understand why he did it. Because it's not kids or men or animals. He was having sex with hot chicks, and every guy, there's not a man that goes, why would he do that? We all, we might go, oh, that's a lot of money. I mean, that's the only response you have. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, is she really grand. worth that? Well, when, yeah. you're, <laughs> when you're making that kind of money, yeah. and here's what I understand, and th is that when you pay that kind of money, there's no drama. Yeah. That's, I mean, because, Jim, the biggest thing you said is you don't pay a prostitute for sex you pay her to leave, which... Charlie Sheen said that. Oh, he said that. Yeah, I oh. said that I pay them to come because Charlie Sheen, they'll come for anyway. <laughs> and you, what I pay for is their acting. I pay for their acting, ah. and the same as Elliot. Here's what Elliot pays for, because she's a sexy girl. He pays to take off his clothes, and when she lays back and he looks her in the face, he's paying her to not go, ugh. And turn her head. <laughs> That's where that money is going. It's do not acknowledge how awful I am. It's pretend that you're enjoying this experience. <laughs> and I could tell you, because he, he put her on a train, and that's what the 4000 was. She was like a $1,200 an hour girl. She was not a $4,000 an hour girl. But she, he took her from New York to D.C. and put oh, her up in the hotel. Nice. And the whole thing must have just had him going all day. Because when I cruise hookers, I won't pick them up unless they're on the right side of my car. It's like an OCD thing. They have to look in my passenger window from the right side. So he had this whole like ritual thing. <laughs> you need to put like a little sign on your doors. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, a little arrow. <laughs>
So you can have the hottest hooker. If she's on the wrong side of the car, you're done. I have abso- absolutely blown uh, 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 dates like that, not gone on them because they approached the wrong side of the car. It just it, There was something wrong about it. It's a, a weird OCD thing. It became part of my ritual. And so you're saying that Elliot had his own ritual where it had to involve all this in order for the experience to be great, and he was willing to pay big cash for that experience. I think so, yeah. And being so recognizable, you got you got to keep it. You know, and, and, and hotels are probably the smart way to go because you're afraid of being filmed. You know what I mean? You probably don't want to go to some brothel or someone's house because that guy Jason Itzler, who uh, ran New York Confidential, uh, who he's, he's in jail now, but he he offered us all like a free hour. I took a free hour from his top girl uh, Natalia. I banged oh. her. Yeah, she was great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, they were all over the news and stuff. She's apparently on like Entertainment Tonight. She's banged so many guys, but I, I I banged her for free because they they did they came into the show and he's like I'm giving you guys all the free hour and of course no one else took it and I went like that week and took my free hour. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> Were you able to take everybody else's hour as well? I, I could have taken more, but they got busted because he was so flagrant about it. Uh, he was so out there about it. Yeah, weren't you afraid? Weren't you afraid? Was look now you're a guy. I mean, you know, back in the day when Jim Norton was just running around doing what he was doing, nobody knew. But now you're a successful guy. Wouldn't you be afraid of being involved in a non uh, Nevada brothel situation because it's not legal anywhere else? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to hurt me though. And the only thing, like now I'm in a relationship, so anything like that would hurt my relationship. But that's all they can do. I mean, it's like that's the beauty of being in our business in the sense. Like entertainers, we were just talking about Zach Wilde off the air and how he puked and like he passed out. And that's acceptable. Like yeah. you can't shock people in this business. That's the great part about it. You know, like, it's true. You're, you're right. No, it yeah. lends credence to who he is on the air, dude. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah, he got busted with a. Hooker. But you don't know. Now here's the thing, because I, I I don't know about you, but I have a moral turpitude clause in my contract. It says if you do something that can embarrass oh. the company or break the law, you're out. I would. I most. I mean, most companies have contracts like that. It gives them a way to get rid of you. But you feel like you probably get a bonus, right? They probably would give you a raise if you got busted for prostitution. Well, I mean, you know what? Now, I don't know. I have to look at my contract again. I, <laughs> stupid Bob Eatman just told me where to sign. You know what? I, I may have that same thing in my contract. <laughs> I'm talking a lot of crap. I don't even know what I signed. So oh. I, if I do have that, that's a good point. Maybe, maybe that's the reason they could. Nice. Nice. Watch this, he's blowing his face, watch, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> he can't breathe, but watch this. Nice, daddy. Nice, daddy. Nice, Daddy. I'm losing my mind, I think. Yeah. The BJ Shea Morning Experience on 99.9 KISW.